let's talk about some simple electrical components. Switches. A switch is a device that simply connects or closes a circuit to allow electrons to flow, creating current flow. When you open or turn off the switch, current stops flowing. Switches come in many shapes, sizes, and configurations, but it's important to keep in mind that they all perform the exact same function to open and close a circuit. Let's first take a look at the standard wall switch. It has two terminals, one for incoming voltage and the other to allow that voltage's electrons to start moving once the switch is turned on or the circuit is closed. If I measure the voltage across a closed switch or a switch that is on, with the voltage applied, the reading will be zero because the voltage from one side is the same as the other. If the switch is open, turned off, then I should read the full voltage difference. If I want to check continuity, I read from terminal to terminal. The switch should read zero to half ohm. Anything higher than half ohm on a closed switch, then the switch is bad. Let's look at some other switch configurations. Toggle switches and rocker switches. Internally, they work the same. When we turn the switch on, there is a copper slide that moves over two contact points connecting them. When we turn the switch off, the slide moves away, disconnecting them. This is a single pole, single throw switch, meaning it has one circuit and one connection point. Many switches have more than one circuit built into one switch housing. Some have two or more. The most common switch is the double pole, single throw, meaning when I move the switch in its one direction to turn it on, it closes two individual circuits. Internally, the two circuits are not connected. If we have two circuits, but the slide makes contact in both directions, this is a double throw, making it a double pole, double throw. A three-way light switch is a good example of a single pole, double throw. Again, many switches have many configurations. To test a switch, look at the action of the switch. You can do an ohm reading on the switch to see if you have good continuity, meaning little to no resistance. A good switch will read half ohm or less when it is closed. Magnetic switches or reed switches. There are many types of magnetic switches. They are usually used as a safety device or a measure of some type. Let's take a look at some. In the work I do, the most common is the magnetic door switch. In dishwashers, it's a safety to keep the dishwasher from coming on if the door is open. In commercial freezers, it turns off the refrigeration system while the door is open. Here's how they work. Inside the housing is what's known as a reed switch. When a magnet is placed near the reed, it pulls the switch closed. When the magnet is pulled away, the switch opens. These are typically part of a lower voltage control circuit. Aha, a new term. I will talk more about control circuits when we talk about transformers. Float switches are also a magnetic reed switch. The ball or float contains the magnet and the stem has the switch built in. It is important to make sure you don't reverse the mounting of the float ball as this will likely change how the switch works. Typically, when working with reed switches, they are normally open. When you put the magnet near them, they close. There are normally closed switches available, like your door alarm on your house. When the magnet is near, it's open, and when it is pulled away, the switch closes, triggering the alarm. Note, I am not saying all alarms, but at least mine. Micro switches. You will find micro switches in many types of equipment. They are in microwave ovens as door switches, ensuring the microwave does not come on when doors open. They are used in many door switch applications like commercial convection ovens and industrial equipment. They are also used alongside motor-driven timers, typically called dryer timers, to cycle other devices on and off. 
You may also find them mounted on pressure sensor devices, float switches, conveyor safety stops, inside push button start assemblies, and the list goes on. A micro switch is a single pole double throw momentary switch. Not all applications use the second throw, but they all are internally designed the same way. You will find the terms on the terminals common or com, normally open or NO, and normally closed or NC. Momentary means it has a spring in it to return it to its original position while the actuator is not being depressed. On the terminal connections, common means it connects to the other two terminals depending on the position of the actuator. With the actuator not depressed, the normally closed is connected to the common. With the actuator not depressed, the normally open is not connected to the common. When we depress the actuator, now the normally open is closed and connected to the common, and the normally closed is open and not connected to the common. Remember this because it's actually how relays work also. The nomenclature refers to when it's not actuated. Mechanical thermostats. We are going to discuss mechanical thermostats, not electronic or solid state. A thermostat is a device of many shapes and sizes that uses a means of sensing temperature changes that then activate a switch. Some use a spring steel that changes its tension as the temperature around it changes. Older wall-mounted thermostats were an easy example. There are commercial warmers that use limit switches made of spring steel that perform the same function except in reverse. When the temperature gets too high, the spring steel opens the switch. Others use oil-filled capillary bulbs to sense the temperature. The oil in the bulb expands or contracts based on the temperature surrounding the bulb. The oil pressure in the bulb sends pressure down the capillary and into an expandable diaphragm that is in contact with an actuator on a small switch and yes, it could even be a micro switch. You can find them in both hot and cold applications. A high limit switch is just a thermostat, but you may have to actually manually reset it. Testing one is the same as testing a standard switch. You put a meter across the leads to see if you have continuity of a half ohm or less when it's supposed to be closed and infinite ohms if it is supposed to be open. The temperature set point dictates that. Most thermostats have a differential built in so if you are set at 75 degrees it may cycle on and off in a 6 to 10 degree swing. It won't be exact. Some have adjustable differentials. Keep in mind that electronic thermostats are just electronic switches turning something on and off but using different means of measuring and usually having some type of relay on the temperature control board. Testing them becomes more about knowing how each board or control works.